exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a reading. A reading from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together with a crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was a lot of his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness to us, to his resurrection. So they proposed to choose. Joseph of Barsabas, who was also known as Joseph, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and accomplish it. On which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for him, and the lot fell on the lights, and he was added to the other apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Let us read portions of Psalm 1 responsibly by half verse. Repeating the refrain at the end. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on the law of the day and the night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither, and everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from First John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given them. And they have received them, and know the truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on the behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am come to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name, which you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, so have I sent them to you. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified. In truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning in our group, where part of that talks about eternal life. It's just sort of mentioning passing on a lot of other things. There are people who believe that the only reason to become a Christian is to have eternal life. My concept is. You know, being a southerner, it's it's more like grits. It doesn't matter what you order for breakfast, grits just come. <laughs> being a Christian, eternal life just comes with. But let's play with this a little bit. Because we have had people from the arts wrestle with this from the get-go. We can go to Dante. We can go to some of our Italian uh, authors, or right, uh, painters in the early Renaissance, where they're talking about, oh yeah, you got eternal life, and you didn't do so good, so you're getting to go to that eternal life. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's, let's talk about, if eternal life is the goal, as opposed to it just comes with our faith, 
we actually have a fair number of modern films that wrestle with that, TV shows even. Okay, how many of you like to watch vampire movies? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a few hands up. <laughs> so vampires theoretically have the eternal life. Or how about the Highlander series or the movies? They got great sword fights too in there. But of course only one at the end. They also have, in theory, eternal life. Start, the, the authors actually wrestle with what is it like to live forever? But there's something missing. So in the Highlander series, you have these people who have lived for centuries. They are very wealthy because they get to accumulate their life's wealth and they quote unquote die because otherwise people would try to kill them. And that's inconvenient because then you gotta try to figure out how to dig yourself out of the grave because you can't die. And so now it's set into the Highlander series, the beginning of, or actually the end of the 20th century. And so these are men, because of course that's what the series is about, is they're men of immense wealth. But they're always worried about one another's presence. And if you look at their relationships, okay, a couple of them have the dramatic, I fell in love with a normal human woman and, and then she died of old age and oh, I'll never find another one. And so there's this element of despair, of darkness. And, and the filmmakers are great about that. If, if you ever go back and look, it's not out in the bright, sunny village today. No, they always put it on the dark, cloudy, almost wintry day, frequently New York City or Scotland. If you've ever never been to Scotland, Scotland actually does have bright, sunny days. They celebrate those. It's sort of like for those of you who've lived in Seattle. You celebrate the sunny days. And so they're always sort of this dark and gloomy. They, they go inside these manses and they never turn all the lights on. So how in the room would they be? It's the look. Because the lights are always dim. There's a darkness. There's a despair. So you step back to the vampire movies. And you have this act for those who like Buffy in the prior decades. You know, the vampire's there, you know, okay, they're cute, they fall in love, they lose their soul, they regain their soul. Wait, most of them don't have souls. Here's a clue. Most of them don't have souls. That's sort of written into the ethos, if you will, of living forever, but you have no soul. And therefore, your whole goal is to feed on others, to feed on their essence. They break Jewish law and they actually got to feed on blood, which is forbidden in Jewish law. And actually the concept of vampires goes way back many, many centuries. So this isn't just a modern day fiction invention. What is it like? There's a darkness and despair. Uh, for those of you who are into the Patricia Briggs, even, even in Patricia Briggs' uh, werewolf series, they have vampires and there's always this, you know, they wear black. <laughs> Maybe a nice dark blood red. They're not into yellows and oranges because they don't get to see the sun. They don't get to go out. They can't go out into the light. And that's both capital L and little L. So they have eternal life of a, a kind, and it's like, Ugh. I don't know that. I don't, and they always offer, you know, their the people that are going to feed on. Well, who I can offer you this? And we all know in the movies, like, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. And so here we are as Christians saying, no, no, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want that kind of eternal life. So maybe eternal life is the goal, because there are a lot of ways, in theory, to have eternal life. Rembrandt, if you will, is still alive in our hearts because we love looking at his paintings. Bach, 
still lives in our hearts because we love his music. A lot of us kind of hope we have that kind of eternal life. You know, that our great great grandchildren will know those stories about us. But if you are a studier of history, you know that history can change. Because, yes, they'll, they'll tell all these wonderful stories in a hundred years about me, and then somebody will find some of my private journals. <laughs> and it won't look so good anymore. The church will protect the bishop. <laughs> That's where we've always gotten into trouble. <laughs> Shall we talk about our co cathedral brothers and sisters across the way, some of their prior popes, one who just got canonized, and all of the pious sins are coming out. So there's all this eternal life. So what is what is the writer of 1 John talking about? Why would we want eternal life? Isn't it going to be boring? Isn't it going to be, you know, okay, it's, it's who dies with the most toys, but we don't die, so now we've got this eternal, well, I've got this, what do you have? Or the joke, as some of you may have heard, that when the Episcopalian gets to heaven, and it's well, we've got to figure out a place for you. And and you know, and then there's this one denomination, I won't name denominations, they're over there by themselves. Well, well, why are they shh, shh, shh. they don't know anybody else is here? <laughs> and then the the, the, you know, the brunt of the joke are all these people sitting around on the edge of the road, paid for the gold stones, of course. Um, just and it's like, well, who are those? Well, those are your fellow Episcopalians, because they did everything in life that because you could eat, drink, and be merry, and, and, and dance, and all of these things, except for use the wrong fork at dinner once. <laughs> <laughs> and they're bored. I don't know about you. That doesn't sound like eternal life. The thing that's missing in all of these is what Jesus called and our Jewish brothers called the Shema. What are the greatest commandments? It's love. Loving God. Loving your neighbor. And then of course Jesus made it even hard for us. Loving your enemy. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are working age, that means loving your co-worker. For those of you who are still in school, it's loving that classmate. That just gets on your very last nerve. It's love. And it, and it isn't just that warm feeling or, or that love that in the highlight, you're, oh, I love this one woman once. And now I'll never love again. No, this is that transcendent love. For those of you who are married or partnered, it, it's that one where you probably remember the first time you looked at your loved one and you saw all the warts. But they still made your heart go into the pattern. And it was worth going through. It is the love that breaks your heart when that love dies, whether through divorce or natural death. It is that transcendent love of someone who now you get to hold a brand new baby. It may be your own, it may be a grandchild, it may be one that was buried in this world. You hold this brand new baby, and that baby looks up at you with the unfocused eyes and sort of wiggling around a little bit. And you'd be willing to do anything for this child. those who are animal lovers is kitten herbies or puppy breath. All these things are emblems of this love. Going up on the mountaintop and going, wow, God, look at what you made. This is fantastic. 
That's the life eternal the writer of John is talking about. It's like grace. It just comes with. It's because we live as Christians. It's because that we work at, and we fail a lot. Oh, do we fail? If you don't think we don't fail, start reading Peter, especially in Mark. Peter's always getting into trouble, always falling short, always stumbling over his own two feet verbally, sometimes physically, I guess. But it's that radical love that no matter how broken we are, no matter how much we fall down in sin, we're still made in God's image, and God still loves us and invites us not into a half-life for all eternity. The one that Judas worried about. It's that life of fullness where all of a sudden all clocks disappear. It's like one moment to the next, as if it's Time does not exist. That's those transcendent moments. For those of you who have held a newborn baby, did you not have that moment where all time seemed to stop? For those who have fallen into love with somebody and you felt that first bitter pattern in your heart and you realized this is the one. For that first moment of that realization, all time stopped. If you've been gifted with a puppy or a kitten and you first held it in your arms, all time stopped. As you hold a beloved one who is passing from this life into the next, that moment just before that final breath, all time seems to stop. That's our clue, my friends. That is our closest clue. For God exists both in time and out of time. And he gives us, or for those who are so inclined, she, because we're both made in the image of God, or they. But God gives us these instances where time stops and things are eternal and you feel that intense love as if it will never end and it's wonderful. That's what the writer of John is calling us into. For those who cannot love are vampires, are highlanders, not, not the real Scottish Highlanders. This is the series. There's a difference. But all these people that our artists have written about, have painted about, <clears throat> have written music about, are pointing out that if you do not have love, this has no value. If you do not have a radical love for another, for God, for your neighbor, even for your enemy. This is all you have. Is it worth the despair and the darkness? No. I have seen people who suffer from deep, dark depression with medication and talk therapy don't help. I actually know of them. What keeps this man here on this earth, even though every day wakes up with this darkness, almost as if he were like these characters, it's his love for his daughter, his drive to be there. Even though he can't express that love easily because of his brain sickness, if you will, where chemicals in his brain aren't functioning right, he has this love for his daughter that transcends everything. And one thing he 
and I talk about is that when he is no longer confined or trapped by a body whose brain causes him to suffer so much, that he will see that transcendence. He will be free from that. That his life eternal is not a half-life, but a holy life lived in love. How many of you think that's easy? It's not. And it's fraught with a lot of cost. Christ died accused of a crime, died a criminal's death, abandoned by his friends, the people who he'd been trained, potentially to spare that as a human Jesus, that all these people who he'd been working with, was it for naught? Now, if you read the Gospel of John, he knew. But if you read the Gospel of Mark, there, there's a wonder there. But it was worth to him to have that sacrificial love. It comes at a high cost. What do we have to give up? If you're attached to this world, as our Gospel talks about, it's a lot. But if you're willing to understand that everything that God created, nothing is destroyed, changed, but nothing is destroyed in God's eyes, that cost of love becomes easier, doesn't it? If you have a friend who says eternal life, you don't know about that. Is that like being a vampire or a werewolf or, or a highlander or any one of these supernatural things that we talk about that have this half life? Which I, oh, no, 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 no. Is it being bored sitting on a stoop in heaven because you've done everything on earth and therefore you can't do it? That there's nothing to do in heaven? This is like all time stops and you are infused with the deepest love that you have ever experienced and beyond. We have eternal life now, right now. Each one of us, we are called to eternal life. It's not something that we necessarily chose because in the Episcopal tradition, we baptize babies even though they can't say, I believe, because they don't necessarily articulate that yet. We baptize them because we believe that that person will live forever and is called to do that, not in a half-life, but in that fullness of love. So, if you already have eternal life, In your wildness of dreams that you can't even imagine. What does it allow you to do as a Christian in the 2021? What does it give you? That's eternal life. Nothing can take it away from you. How radical in love can you be?
Stephen, Joe, Gary, Jerry, and Melinda are really pleased. But for we are postulant for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. especially those who have died in Israel and Palestine this past week, and all who have died from violence, fear, and hatred. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those in our prayer list, including Jim, Sharon, Kay, Gary, Rose, Norm, Sandra, Alan, Harry. Those for whom our prayer chain intercedes. And we pray for any others we may care to now name. Pray for our brothers and sisters. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. And pray for 
pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rise into life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn, proclaiming the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate for the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood and the covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Luke, Stephen, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. I am, and with him, and in him, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory of yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace, 
Let us go forth rejoicing in the ascension of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.